Hey there, Hoopty fans. I'm going to start making some new videos. We're not going to do everything on location like we've been doing in the past. I'm going to do some things here in my basement office. Uh, sorry I don't have quite the cool background that some YouTubers do, but I think I got a pretty cool basement going here. Anyway, uh, we're going to go through a top 10 list. The top 10 things that I'm looking for right now to buy for either myself or my used car dealership or Connie, eh, you know, both. <laughs> uh, my life has become collecting cars and then selling them. So everything I buy, uh, the joke in the Keith house is everything's for sale. If you want it, make me an offer. But anyway, let's talk about the top 10 cars I'm looking for right now. And we'll use the little screen capture thing on the computer and I'll actually look on some online auctions and see what's out there and see what's available and we'll talk about it and what I might be buying. All right, first of all, cue my intro. All right, folks, this is a new camera setup, so hopefully it looks good. Hopefully I have everything where it needs to be. But let's go through these top 10 cars that I'm looking for right now, and I'll work on the computer here. Maybe I'll put myself down in the corner or something. We'll have to figure out the best way to do this. We'll talk about the top cars that I'm looking for right now. Uh, maybe if you're aware of one, you could send me a message. If you own one, maybe we can make a deal. Send me a message, and maybe we'll negotiate. Anyway, we'll start with number 10. I wasn't sure what order to put these in, but number 10 is going to be the Hummer H3T. Now, this is one of the coolest things around. Um, I feel like this truck was way ahead of its time. Uh, not only is it, you know, a mid-size pickup, it's not quite as big as a full size. Uh, it's pretty big, though. I mean, it's really not even as small, I don't think, as some of the smaller pickups. Uh, I wouldn't put it in the range of like a Colorado, especially from its age group. Of course, those Smaller trucks keep getting bigger and bigger right now, but I really, really like the Hummer H3T Alpha. So let's take a look and see if we can find any of those in the marketplace right now and see what they're going for. All right, folks, just to give you an idea of where I will be looking for things, this is called Edge Pipeline. This is for dealers only. This is searching dealer auctions all across the country. And I have this set up with auctions that I want to do business with. Um, you can see that I have it set to limit to my auctions, if you're paying attention there. And the way I've set this up, there's basically a transportation program where um, this one company will transport from certain auctions. And I have set it up basically so I can watch the auctions that are available for that transportation program and left out auctions because I don't want to travel hundreds or thousands of miles to pick up cars. That's just not what I want to spend my time doing. Uh, but this company works directly with the auctions and I can go find these cars on the website, do all the work on the website, and then just have them shipped to me for a very, very low reasonable price. And... Um, <clears throat> I've kind of set this up so that I'm looking both at auctions near me and auctions to the south of me. I don't want to really deal with auctions to the north of me because we have talked about rust, rust, rust is the problem. So I want to look at southern auctions. Okay, so let's see what's out there. Okay, so let's see what's out there. So let's look and see if we can see any Hummer H3Ts. So let's see. Show all Hummer H3Ts. There's one. Let's see where it's at. Okay. 129,000 miles on it. Looks like it's located at the South Bay auto auction in California it looks like crap and it also as you can see is the 3.7 five cylinder not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in the alpha with the v8 so 
you can see why I haven't bought one of these. Eh. This company has a really, really poor camera they're taking pictures with. But anyway, I'm not interested in that one, so moving on. We'll have to keep our eyes open. We'll also check out in the real world. I always look at Auto Tempest. Let's pull it up real quick. It's a pretty cool site. So let's see. Hummer. H3T. 26301 is my zip code. And we'll just put nationwide in here. So let's dream a little bit. Uh, gosh, the prices. So there, right there is an awesome one. I don't really, I don't love that color. Mm, going by the mileage is what I'm looking at. If you wonder why I'm scrolling fast. Yeah, nothing I love there. Uh, the most attractive one, this is H3T Luxury Edition. Looks like it's on cars.com. And, I mean, you see just what a cool truck it is. It is pretty neat. Now, I don't know if this one's the Alpha. It doesn't really say. I don't know what the Luxury Edition is. But you see that one is in pretty awesome condition. Uh not sure if that's the alpha no see that's the 3.7 inline five cylinder double overhead cam so still not exactly what i want so i guess we'll have to continue to dream on the h3t right now number nine is kind of for me but it's kind of for the dealership too because it seems like people always want these people love them uh, i'd love to have a whole lot full of them but it's the full size gm SUVs and I'm talking any of them. I like them all. Yukons, Tahoes, Suburbans. Like that is just something that I'm looking for. Now I'm looking for a certain kind. Don't get me wrong. I don't want $70,000 trucks. That's just not the uh, not what I want to spend on a vehicle and not what I think that my customer base here in Clarksburg, West Virginia wants to spend on a vehicle either. At vintage variety used cars, I'm trying to, you know, have a, uh, a good selection of cars, but not have these crazy, crazy prices. I don't want to put people in $1,000 payments. It's just not, not what I'm trying to do. So I'm looking for uh, Tahoes, Yukons, Suburbans. But what I want is the ones that are, you know, relatively low mileage, um, less than... I don't know, less than 120,000 miles. And I think that, you know, that sweet spot of finding them around, um, you know, 2005 to maybe all the way up to like 14 or 15. Um, nothing really newer than that. When you get up to 16, 17, 18, the prices just go completely insane. So it's really that, that, that sweet spot that I'm looking for of mileage and value and what I can sell it for. And, you know, they still have all the modern conveniences. And the biggest thing here in West Virginia, and I also buy a lot of cars from Ohio and Pennsylvania, is finding the ones that don't have rust. Rust is a big problem. Uh, the West Virginia cars are not great. Um, the Pennsylvania and Ohio cars, they're just trash, folks. I try to stay away from those as much as I can. It must be something different that they put on the roads in the winter or something. But those cars, they are just roached out. They are junk. I really try not to buy high mileage cars. I've even had some low mileage cars that had crazy rust from Pennsylvania and Ohio. All right, let's do let's do a quick search for Chevy, and we'll put GMC model. Okay, this is going to bring up way too many results, so we're going to have to we're going to have to cut them down here. So let's go Tahoe and K 
Okay, let's just look at Tahoe's first. But we're gonna have to be more specific on exactly what we want here. Yukon, Yukon XL, and we will click uh, Suburban also. But let's do year. We'll do 2003 to 2000. Let's do 17 just for the sake of making sure I cover all my bases. And max mileage, let's do 100,000. So that'll cut it way down. Let's see what we got here. And also, I'm going to click limit to my auctions so it only shows me places that I want to do business with now <clears throat> if you're not familiar with dealer auctions um, one important thing that we have to pay attention to is the lights um, some of them don't show a light but others will show a red light and that generally is pretty bad uh, that means it's as is um, and with a dealer auction you can pretty much guarantee that means there's something bad wrong with it uh, <laughs> So let's also throw in here that they must have photos. Okay, so let's see what we got here now. Now it's got these lined up by distance from me. I don't really care too much about the distance. Like I said, I'm using a, a service that does transportation, but the MMR right here is the Mannheim Auctions, what they're seeing them go for. So that's just kind of giving you an idea. It's not really based on this vehicle in particular. So it's not taking into account the mileage and the condition. It's really just a general number just to give you an idea what these trucks go for. Um, so you see that's way out of the price range where I'm wanting to be. Now this one right here, 2008 Yukon with 93,000 miles. And that's actually at our local auction here in Shinston, West Virginia. Let's see. Let's take a closer look at that one. See, that one, that looks pretty clean. I mean, that's that's the kind of thing we're looking for right there. Uh, and that's here at my local auction. I wonder why that didn't... I wonder why I didn't see that yesterday. I actually went to the auction on Monday. So we're going to put that one on our watch list. And that's an interesting one. Uh... But you kind of get an idea of what I'm looking for here. Here's another one at Mountain State, a 2007 Denali with 96,000 miles. That's not bad. Uh, Periopolis Auto Auction, which is not too far from me, 86,000 miles on a 2011. That is actually ideal. Like, I'm not crazy about that color. But that that is a really good age. And the mileage is good. I mean, that's that's one that I'd be very, very interested in. So we're going to add that one to our watch list too. Maybe see what that one goes for. Maybe even throw a bit out there on it. Uh, these are a little more than I want to spend. 24000 27 range. A 2007 Suburban LS with only 42,000 miles. MMR on it, 6500 No way it'll go that cheap. Uh but that is a good one right there. Some of these auctions have terrible cameras, but look at that interior. I mean, you can see that's well taken care of. So that's one that I'm super interested in. And that's uh, America's Auto Auction Columbus in Columbus, Ohio. So that's one we may go through a bid on. I don't know. We'll see about that, but we may throw a bid on that one. That's, that's super interesting right there. Number eight, I really could have probably combined with number nine, so no big surprise here. Escalades and Navigators, you know, still the full-size big trucks, but the higher-end luxury models. And the same, uh, same rules apply as far as what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, you know, lower mileage, older, but not too old. Uh like to get in that sweet spot of course i'll go a little higher on an escalade than i will on a tahoe obviously but they're very similar and you know people just like cadillacs navigators are 
in my opinion, a little harder to find. It, they must not have sold as many of them or something. So they're pretty hard to come by. Um, and, you know, along the same lines, I'm also always looking at uh, the big Fords too. But they don't quite make the list here uh, as far as my top 10. They'd probably be in here if I had a top 15. But the big Fords, I don't like the engines as much. And the rust problem seemed to be even worse on the Fords than it is on the GM vehicles. Uh, now, I squeeze the Navigator in there because they're hard to find. And every time I see one, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to come up with a good reason why I should buy it because I really want one. Uh, but they all kind of fall into the same category. All right, next up, let's look at... All right, next up, let's look at Cadillac Escalades and Navigators. So I'm just going to look at both of them at the same time, Cadillac and Lincoln. And we'll go Model, Escalade, Navigator, okay, Odometer, let's say under 120. And year, I don't want to look at new ones because I can't afford them. So let's say max year 2015. Yeah, let's make it 16. So max year 2016. And I only want to see the ones with photos. And I only want to see the ones at my auctions. So let's see what we got here. Washington, PA, that's really close. 116,000 miles, 21 grand. See, I, I'll go a little higher on an Escalade. I would pay 21,000 for an Escalade. But, I mean, here's what we want. 2011, 6.2 liter V8. Ah, oh, that is hot. That is exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, see, that one, 105,000 miles. MMR on it's 12,100. And also show you, I got this cool little program. Uh, this is a program called Carbly that I pay a subscription for. It brings up Kelly Blue Book and it shows the auction price. And this is kind of what I go by usually on what I want to pay. Um, and you can see for this Cadillac Escalade, the spread between the auction price and the fair purchase price is really nice. I mean, we're talking almost $5,000. So if I could get uh, this 2000 Escalade in this, you know, we'll just say eleven to 13000 range, I could definitely make money selling it in the fifteen to seventeen or fifteen dollars to $18,000 range. So that, um, that truck right there is something I'm very interested in. Now, I won't be the only one, obviously, for all the reasons that I'm interested in it. Oh, and, and see, folks, if you're not familiar with dealer auctions, this is the kind of stuff you find a lot of the times. And that looks like a bottle of coolant. That's not great. <laughs> uh, you got to really put on your investigator cap when you're looking at these pictures. I mean, the person that drove this really didn't like to throw anything away, it looks like. They just threw everything in the back. But, I mean, overall, other than it looking dirty, I mean, that doesn't look great, but... I guess that's the chrome falling off the bumper in one spot, some chips, big scratch. This is a great auction. Uh, this is Capital City Auto Auction um, in Charleston, and I really like that they give you all this information. Will it stop me from buying the car? Absolutely not, but uh, it's much better than our local auction here in Shinston tells me absolutely nothing, and I'm always you know, finding things I'm surprised and didn't know. I would much rather be given the information and be able to make an educated decision than not knowing anything about the car. So that's a super, super nice es Escalade. Pfft, I can't talk. Super nice Escalade. We're definitely going to watch that one and probably make a bid on that. Uh, let's go back here to see what else real quick. See if anything catches my eye here. Uh, this one catches my eye. 2012 Black Escalade, 105,000 miles. It's got the 6.2 liter V8. Uh, they've rated it below average. That's not a huge deal because it's probably stuff that we could touch up and fix and work on. Uh, 
I'm not sure what that is. There's something taped there. Looks like a wire, so that's a little bit disturbing. Uh, let's flip through these pictures real quick and see how bad it is. Pretty bad scratch there. Ooh, see, there's some rust. Uh, and this one is in New York. I usually don't even watch uh, stuff in that direction because of rust, but just the fact that there's that one little piece of evidence of rust in these pictures, I'll probably just move right along. You can see the oh, the wheel is corroding, terrible. Yeah, we don't we don't want that. We want southern cars. We don't want cars from up north. Uh, it's bad enough buying, buying cars here where I am. Going even further north is definitely a bad idea. Here's one, Fort Wayne, Indiana. See, it's a red light, 108,000 miles, $9,000 MMR. Eh, we probably want to avoid that one too. Once again, I don't even know why I'm watching these northern auctions. I'd much rather stick to down south. Let's see what we got here. Just looking a little bit further. I don't want to take too much of your time, but... Oh, here we go. Oh, that's a two-wheel drive. Two-wheel drive. Gosh, and that is pretty. That is a pretty truck. But a two-wheel drive SUV where I am in West Virginia, I mean, that really has almost zero value to me, so I'm just going to pass that one up. Uh which I hate because that was great mileage and a really good color. So those two pages of these, of these, there was actually a lot of them, but you can see what I meant uh, before when I told you almost all Cadillacs here, no navigators. So uh, that's kind of disappointing. Here's an old one, an 04, which I actually think is pretty cool. I like that body style. Uh... Yeah, pretty much really nothing that I'm really, really crazy about other than that one that's local. Because uh, I'm looking for something pretty specific. And none of these really fit exactly what I'm looking for. There's, well, that's an 07. Let's check that one out. An 07. Got one big bad spot back there on the back bumper that seat is kind of ugly and you see out here on the interior looks pretty dirty yeah check engine lights on so something like that would be definitely a gamble look you can see up close that seat uh, looks like that's on the front a little bit of fa uh, hazing on the headlights which is an easy fix I don't know. So I'm not crazy about that one. I don't know. Anyway, let's move on. Number seven. We're still talking about SUVs, but I got kind of a weird one here um, that I'm really into right now. And I keep seeing them, and I just haven't seen one at the right price yet, but I really want one. Um, once again, I'd like to find one lower mileage and just a little bit older. Maybe not quite as old as I'm talking about on these bigger SUVs, but maybe like a 16 or a 17. But the Buick Enclave, but it's got to be the Avenir. I think that's how you pronounce it. I hope I'm pronouncing it right and I don't sound like an idiot. Avenir, Avenir, I don't know. It's their top, top, top. Uh, it's the super, super nice one that has everything. And I'm not a big Buick guy. I don't love Buicks. But I've gotten a chance to look at a couple of these things up close. And they've all been really, really new ones that were out of my price range. But that that Enclave Avenir is, uh, you know, it, it's a classy, classy car. So I'd really like to find one of those at a good price and get my hands on one. So I'm watching for one of those. All right, let's move on, clear this out, and we'll go to Buick Model going to go for the Buick uh, Enclave. Now remember folks, I don't just want an Enclave. I want an Avenir. 
Let's see. Let's go under 100,000 miles. And right there's one. Right here, local. Way out of the price range I want to pay. 37000 but that's a good example of one just to show you one. That is an Avenir, which, I don't know. Look at that interior. I love, love, love that interior. I like the stitching where they put the Avenir on the seat. I don't even know what that means or what it stands for. Uh, I just know it's a super cool trim level. But anyway, let's see. Let's see if there's any in the price range that I want to pay. Yeah, see, this must be a pretty new thing. Uh, see, there's like a regular Enclave. Good deals. There's a couple good deals here, but I'm only excited by this one trim level. I mean, there's one with 63,000 miles. It's still in the $30,000 range. That's a 2021. Uh, I like that silver, though. All blacked out interior is not quite as pretty as that brown interior, but let's see what this one's worth just out of curiosity. Yeah, so I mean, you're going to be paying twenty-seven to thirty thousand for this, and the fair purchase price thirty to thirty-four. So this is one you got to be pretty careful because you don't want to pay the excellent uh, auction price and then end up selling it for the fair purchase price because as you see those are about the same so we got to be here and here or here and here we can't be here and then here <laughs> uh, that's where you get into trouble as a car deal you can see over here it shows the spread um, gotta gotta rate your cars correctly and know how much money you're going to put into them definitely one of the tricks of the car dealership uh, learning curve that I'm still working on in some cases Number six. Okay, number six for me is kind of a weird one too because I once again, I don't think this was a real high production vehicle. So I don't see a ton of them for sale, but it's a Nissan Titan XD. And, you know, the XD in the Nissan Titan is not like a big, big truck. It seems like it's kind of a midpoint between like a 2500 or 3500 and a 1500 pickup. So it's not quite as big as like a, you know, Silverado 2500, and it's not quite as bad on gas mileage, but it's still got a little bit more than like a 1500 Silverado or F-150 or whatever we're talking about. It's kind of, they built a weird truck that I, I think that's probably why they didn't sell very many because it's not a very popular segment. It's a segment that they kind of created with the XD. Uh, it's not... Quite as great as the 2500, but it's not quite as, quite as, it's, it's, it's just in between. Uh, and I really kind of like that in between thing. It's just kind of a neat thing to me because I don't want to pay the big $2,500 money. Uh, <laughs> and the, the motor doesn't really matter. Of course, they have a great diesel and it seems like they have a really good V8 also. So either or, but I like the Titan XD. All right, let's check out Titans, Nissan, du, 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 Nissan. So we want to look for the Titan XD since that's what I'm interested in. There's 125 of them for sale on here. I only want to see the ones with photos and I only want to see the ones at my auctions. All right, so let's go back to the top and look at the closest one here. There is one currently at my local auction, a 2018, showing as is. Wonder what's wrong with it. And that's the 5.6 liter V8. I thought it was wrecked there for a second, but maybe it's just the lighting. Don't love that color. Uh, you all will learn from shopping with me if we do this more often. I'm not a big fan of burgundy. I love red, not really dark red. So burgundy, maroon, whatever you want to call it. Not really my thing. Uh, see, this one's also here local in Shenston, 2017. I mean, that's still a lot of money for me. And what I, I mean, 
If I was going to buy the thing for myself and drive it daily, that would be one thing. But if I'm buying it for my lot, there's really kind of a sweet spot where I've found I have a lot easier time selling cars. And that's just a little bit high for where I want to be. Um, let's see. Let's just figure. Let's set a max of 120. Let's see these by year first. And I'm going to go all the way to the bottom here and look at the older ones. Okay, so we're going to start with the oldest one here is a 2016. Maybe that's as far back as Nissan Titan XDs go. I don't know. But see, like that one, that's all the way in Texas. So that's a long haul for me. So I'd probably have uh, some money in transportation, probably at least $1,000, maybe a little more. But that's hot. I mean, that's... That's what we're talking about right there. 2016 Nissan Titan XD. Um, oh, that one's rear-wheel drive. See, in Texas, rear-wheel drive might be okay. In West Virginia, that is a turd. <laughs> we do not need that. Uh, so the first one here that would be viable to me would be this Platinum. And see, that just really knocks the price up. And I don't care for the Platinums anyway. I know that's like their top of the line, but that's kind of... The everything package, I don't need that. What I'm looking for is probably more like a Pro 4X or, you know, just a higher level, but not all the way. I don't need everything. Like, there's a Pro 4X, but it's got suspension and big tires and crap on it, and I really don't want all that either. Uh, 23000 This one's not bad. Kind of dig that color. You can see on the chrome here, it's like going bad or something. I can see wrinkles. That's kind of annoying. Uh, I guess maybe we could repair that. But, oh, look at that interior. See, I love, love, love that interior. That is cool. With that color, that interior is badass. And that is a platinum reserve. Uh, once again, I don't know that we need the highest trim level. But the MMR says 23.8. Let's check our software and see if that's realistic. Oh, that's not really realistic. Okay, so that, see, that MMR, you have to be careful trusting that because as you can see, it must not have known that it was a platinum reserve uh, because the auction value on that looks like it's 23.5 to 29. And boy, look at the spread between auction and fair purchase on this car. Only 1700 bucks. So you definitely have to be a smart shopper when you're looking at one like this because... Uh, you could definitely get into a situation where you're making very little or no money as a dealer here. Because as you can see, these things are so popular, dealers at the auction are paying big money for them. So that makes them hard to make money on, basically. Okay, number five is going off the rails a little bit. Um, because I think I've had kind of similar vehicles here so far. So going off the rails a little bit here, Folks, I really want a really nice low mileage Honda Element. I don't know how much y'all know about these things. And maybe I'll throw something in the video here that kind of shows you the inside of this thing with all the seats folded up and everything. But uh, the Honda Element is a cool, cool vehicle. Like when this thing was new, I didn't even realize how cool this thing was. You know, you kind of put it in the same category as like a Nissan Cube and the little Kia gerbil mobile, whatever the hell that thing's called. Um, but the Honda element is way cooler than those. I mean, just because it's a small square uh, does not make it the same as those vehicles. Like this thing is almost all rubber inside, but when you fold everything up, it's like a pickup truck inside. Uh, it's the only one of the little square vehicles that I believe that was a four wheel drive. It is just a cool, cool little car. And it's a Honda, right? It's a Honda. So this is a combination of something that I think is cool that maybe other people don't think is cool. Uh, maybe I just need to do some videos and teach them how cool it is. And something that I think would make somebody a really cool vehicle to sell on my lot. So it's pretty high on my list, a Honda Element. Okay, let's see about Honda Elements. Honda. 
Let's see here, element and odometer. We can go a little higher on Honda. Let's look for all of them under 150,000 miles. But I still want to look just at my auctions. I don't want to be going all over the country. And you see, that's a short list. Short list, folks. And I didn't even take out the ones with no pictures. But as you can see, this one is a turd. <laughs> this one has structural damage. We don't want it. I don't know what exempt means, so that's probably bad. Uh, that brings us down to two. One of them is baby green. <laughs> you know the word I'm trying to put in there, but I want to keep this video uh, able to be monetized. And this one, ew, the plastic looks terrible on it. Looks like it's baked in the sun somewhere. Uh, and look at the interior. You got the interior going bad. So today's not the day for me to get a Honda Element. <laughs> As you can see, like I said, these things are hard to find. Uh, let's look out on the actual marketplace here and see. Let's look at Auto Tempest. I need to keep my Auto Tempest open so I can uh, see. Just have this ready. So let's look at Honda Elements nationwide. So, see, like that one. That's what we need. 37,000 miles on a 2010. And let's see what it looks like. Oh, see, that is cool. I like that it doesn't have all the plastic crap on it. I think the newer ones, they had gotten rid of most of that plastic. So see, that one is super cool. I love that. Uh, would love to have that one on my lot. But, of course, you know, if I'm going to sell this thing and try to make money on it, it's hard for me to buy one retail from another dealer. Uh, I need to find one wholesale. I'm just kind of flipping through their pictures to see if anything caught my eye. See how the door's open? See, that's super cool. And these seats, they actually fold, like, uh, down and then up onto the wall. I guess they didn't take any pictures with it like that, but oh, see there they're down, but see those hinges? So those hinges, it actually folds up onto the side then. And okay, there they got them flat. Let's see. And it's also got like the little tailgate. I mean, this is like a super, super versatile little car. Uh, Honda really, I don't think they get enough credit for what they designed when they did this element. I think it's just a super neat little car. Maybe I'll be able to find a video Let's see. Maybe I'll trim some of this out so this isn't so slow. But let's go to YouTube. And let's look for... Okay, we're going to steal somebody Today else's Today I'm going to show you here. how to transform the seats in your Honda Element okay. from this. Into this. Hopefully this guy doesn't First get mad at me for using these his two access video, panels, but followed by tipping up one of the back look seats. Look at that! Check that After out. After that, you can remove the other seat completely and push it to the back, and then remove that first seat you tipped up. Now you simply so take cool. the passenger side seat and put it on the driver's side and snap the feet into place. Repeat the process for the other side, and just like that. Okay, so I guess that was a video on how to make them rear facing, which I didn't even know they could do that. That's pretty neat too. Uh, Let's catch somebody else's video here. They come right off. You can see how easy it is to remove the seats. We're going to move it on this side. Cool. And I am just essentially going to swap them. Very cool. Anyway, I think it's neat as heck. Uh, it's just a cool, very versatile little vehicle. Number four on my list is kind of a generic one. Not exactly as uh, specific as everything I've given you so far. But I'm looking for little trucks. Little trucks are cooler than big trucks to me in many situations. And mostly it's for dudes like me. I can use a truck. There's lots of stuff I can use a truck for. But let's face it, folks. I'm not a big worker. <laughs> I don't need a big truck. Like, I uh, really like... Colorados and Rangers and Dakotas, especially the ones with the V8. And actually the Dakota is probably my favorite. That's the one I'm looking for the hardest. What I would love to have is an older model Dakota 
with a V8 that isn't like completely destroyed because it seems like everybody who bought one of these things just used it to the edge of nothing and there is just nothing left of these trucks. Uh, the Magnum V8 was a great engine but not so great when it has 250,000 miles on it. <laughs> so these trucks, it just seems like they are few and far between like nice ones in good condition uh, with lower mileage and no rust, but it's something uh, I've had several Chevy Colorados um, and I just sell those things so quick. It's crazy. Now the other day at the auction, I'll throw a picture up here, but I found a 2000, gosh, 2007 or 2008 Nissan Frontier with only 29,000 miles. And I scooped that thing up immediately. I got actually a really good price on it. I think I paid like 8,700 bucks or something for it. But I guarantee you when I get that thing ready and out on the lot, uh, whatever I sell it for, it will definitely make me some money. It is definitely going to be a truck that I cash in on. So those trucks, like... I wish I had a whole lot full of those things. I'd love to find just a ton of those trucks. Um, I don't even really look for Tacomas because the price is so crazy on those. But Frontiers, Colorados, Ford and Rangers, you know, those are uh, one of my favorite things to buy. And the most coveted, like I said, is the Dodge Dakota with the V8. But also, like I said, very, very hard to find. I don't think they sold as well as the others. And they probably, I don't even know this to be a fact, but I'm just talking, uh, the V8 Dakotas probably sold for a lot more than the rest of them. So that's probably why they're harder to find. They were probably priced out of their own segment. Okay, if you know me, you know this is one of my favorite subjects, little trucks. So let's look at Cadillac, or Chevrolet, I said Cadillacs, Chevrolets. Uh, let's click on Dodge. And let's click on, what else do we want? Nissan. We'll click on Ford also. Where's Ford? Oh, sorry, I'm not so good at alphabetic order. <laughs> uh, models. So let's see, models, Chevrolet, I want. Colorado and S10, Colorado, and is S10 on here, oh yeah, there it is, S10, Ford, oh no, I'm sorry, Dodge, I want to see Dakotas, let's see, Ford, I want to see, you know it, Ranger, and Nissan, I want to see Frontier. I really, I think the camera's making me nervous and I can't do alphabetic order anymore. <laughs> okay, so it's important to put a top year on here because I don't want to see a bunch of brand new Ford Rangers. So, I don't know. Let's go back to 2016. Odometer, let's go under. Let's go 140 because I'll go a little more on one of these pickups. And, of course, still I want to only see my auctions. So, let's see what we got here. Oh, pictures. Got to have pictures. I'm not buying anything from a dealer auction that doesn't have a picture. It has photos. So that came up with 300 results. So that's a lot of a lot of possibilities here. So we'll look at these by distance. Look at the ones closest to me first. Uh, these Chevy Colorado work trucks. I'm not crazy about those. I don't know. They look a little bit too utilitarian I don't know let's see what catches my eye here this one in particular uh, I've actually already tried to buy it's a piece of junk and doesn't have any keys and it's basically a, a wreck so if you're wondering why I just went by that one without looking at it that's why okay here's something super interesting to me this is in Washington PA which is not too far from me that is an O2 Ranger in red I see a little bit of rust right there. It doesn't look terrible though. Oh man, I love that. I mean, I can see that as something that 
I could definitely sell. Very cool. Let's see what the real value on it is. So huge uh, difference, 4,500 to 5,200. And you see over here the fair purchase price and the spreads. Um, this is one you gotta be really careful with. I mean, people will pay big money for these, especially in cash. If you had a Ford Ranger in the right condition and you put a little bit bigger tires on it, uh, you know, make sure the headlights look good, make sure all this rust is fixed, nothing looks nothing looks crusty or nasty, and underneath if it's in good condition too, uh, I could sell this truck for cash, maybe seven, eight, nine, maybe even ten thousand dollars if it was in the right condition with that crazy sixty-eight thousand miles, uh, because these things, at least where I am, are like coveted as super cool, you know. My dad had one, or my grandpa had one, and everybody loves Ford Rangers. So that's one we're definitely interested in. We'll take a look at that one later on. We'll add it to the watch list. Let's see what else we got here. Any Dakotas? I actually just bought a Frontier the other day. Well, I'll go to my purchases, and I'll show you the one I bought. I'm very, very excited about it. Uh, these are cars I bought yesterday. This is a 2007 Nissan Frontier SE, four-wheel drive, king cab, and I ended up paying 8000 for this truck. Or I'm, I'm sorry, it shows right there I paid 8300 for it, and I think that was a great deal. Uh, if you saw this truck in person, saw how clean it was, you would be shocked. Uh, the interior is basically perfect, and something coming from the auto auction, that's actually, that's unusual. Uh, the back here, it has been hit. This bumper is new. It's been replaced. And there's actually some bent pieces right here on the bottom of the tailgate. But it opens and it's not really a big deal. It wasn't enough to bother me. Inside the truck when I bought it are actually the nicer wheels that came on it. The person that uh, had it must have liked these steel wheels better. But it has nicer wheels in the back. So I'm trying to decide now if I should leave these steelies on it. Or if I should upgrade to those nicer wheels which are you know like aluminum. They're like a five spoke pretty basic wheel. But if I put a little more aggressive tire on it with that five-spoke aluminum wheel, it would look a lot better than these Steelys. Uh, but like I said, it's just a basic truck, but I just get excited about this kind of truck. So I'm really happy to have this one in my inventory at Vintage Variety. It'll probably be, I don't know, uh, I'll probably open, I'll probably put the top price on it when I put it up for sale. I'll probably put... 11.5 or 12 on it um, because it's going to be ready to go. Everything's going to be fixed and it's going to be an awesome truck. And I don't know if you noticed, but it has 29,743 miles. I mean, that is just shocking and crazy that a 2007 has that. It must have been Grandpa's truck uh, that he kept in the garage because there's not a spot of rust on it. Uh, so I'm really excited about that one if you can't tell. All right, number three. Back to something a little more specific. I love Chrysler 300s that had the Hemi motor. Uh, that is such a cool motor, and that is such a classy looking car. I'm actually into the Chrysler 300 more than I'm into the Chargers, actually. Um, of course, it's cool because it's big, and it rides good, and it's a safe car. Uh, you can get it in all-wheel drive. It's harder to find an all-wheel drive with the V8. Uh, I think most of those are actually six cylinders, which I'm not sure why they didn't like to combine the all-wheel drive and the V8. Maybe there's a technical reason for that that I'm not aware of. Maybe it's a torque issue. But um, the Chrysler 300s with the Hemi engine, that is definitely... Uh, I, I actually, some of the older ones, I think, may not even been the Hemi. It may have been the Magnum engine. But those are cool, too. If it was low mileage and in good condition, I would still be into that, too. So let's just say Chrysler 300s with a V8. All right, moving right along here. Let's see if we can find any Chrysler. I want to see. I don't know what the difference in a 300 and 300M is. So I'm hitting both of those under Chrysler. And trim. I don't know what trim to hit. All right, let's just look at all of them because they usually say what engine they have. 
Uh, but let's look at odometer under under 100. I don't want to be over 100 on this car. Chrysler's not the greatest when they get super old. And let's just limit this to my auctions. Let's see what we got here. Oh, pictures. Pictures. Has photos. Okay. So I can just kind of scan here. You can see right here, 3.6, 3.6, 3.6. These are all 3.6s until this one. Ah. See, that's located in Akron, Ohio. That is a 300C all-wheel drive with a 5.7 liter V8. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we need right there. Love that black. Oh, man. MMR on it says it's 5150. Like, if that is accurate, I probably need to be bidding on this car right now. And I may just do that. We're going to put it on our watch list. Let's click on Carbly here and see what they say it's worth. Um, yeah, that's accurate. So forty-two hundred to five thousand, and fair purchase price sixty-five to eighty-one. Uh, I mean, I would drive that. That would be. Maybe I'm strange that I like cars like this, but that is definitely uh, something that turns me on. That especially. The black with the chrome wheels, that's just a bad looking car if you ask me. An absolutely bad looking car. So we're going to bid on that one, folks. <laughs> you might see me owning this one here pretty soon. We'll see. Number two. So number two, I'm going to go a little bit more generic again. One thing that I'm really into that I don't think everybody's into, but I seem to have good luck selling them when I get them, so... Uh, there must be at least some people like me who love them. It's land yachts. So land yachts are very much going out of style. But I love, you know, Lincoln Town Cars, Crown Vicks, uh, Cadillac DTS. Any of these big cars, uh, especially if they have a V8 in their rear wheel drive. Now, I know the Cadillac DTS. I just have one of those recently. And it was actually front wheel drive V8. Still pretty cool. Still pretty cool. Uh, it didn't do quite the donuts that I would like it to do. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it seems like a lot of people are starting to realize how cool these cars are. And the prices are actually retracting on them. They're starting to come back up. Maybe that has something to do with Cletus McFarland and his races, too. But the Crown Vicks, especially, are getting harder to find. Um, and, you know, once again, I don't want one that's beat up. I want the one that grandma had in the garage that, you know, she only put 5,000 miles a year on and it's still in great condition. Um, but these cars, super cool. If they've been taken care of, they're in great condition. Uh, and it goes across all brands. Love Crown Vicks. Love Lincolns. Uh, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Even uh, maybe an older Caprice, Cadillacs. Lincoln's, you know, whatever, as long as it has a V8 and it's a big car and it rides good, uh, especially the newer ones that have lots of features. Uh, just recently, that DTS I had, loved that car. And I know those cars have some issues, but if they've been properly taken care of and they have, like the one I had, had 50 some thousand miles, it's not really to the point where you have to worry about all those issues. So uh, I am really excited about those cars. I really like those cars. And I made good money on that one. So if I can get the right deal on these cars, there's something that I'm definitely on the lookout for. All right, back to work here. Let's see. Let's do a land yacht search. So we're looking for, we'll say Chevrolet. Don't forget, Mercury. We're going to look at Lincoln and Cadillac. There's others, but those are the ones I'm going to do right now. So models. We're going to look at, this is the hard part, DeVille, DTS. I eh, can't think what else. That's all we're going to look at right now. Chevrolet, we're going to look at Caprice, Caprice Classic. And, of course, well, that's probably it for right now. We forgot Ford, though. Let's go... Ford. Okay. Ford, of course, we need Crown Victoria. 
I don't even know what an LTD is. Is that just the older version? We're going to click on those two. Lincoln Town Car. Yeah. Uh, Mercury Grand Marquis. And we always remember to also click on, I was going to say Marauder, but I, they must not have it separate. The Marauder is maybe one of my favorite cars ever, but as anyone who's a car guy out there knows, they're getting, they're basically already a collector's item, so it's it's too late to get a good deal on one of those. So let's switch just to my auctions and let's see only the ones with photos and just see what we got here. All right. Oh, I didn't. We gotta filter out the mileage. I don't want to see the ones with two hundred thousand miles. So odometer. Let's go under a hundred. That's what I'm really interested in. Okay. So let's see here. The very first one is a 2006 Lincoln Town Car Signature, 4.6 liter V8. Oh, folks. I almost love that. I'm going to tell you why I hesitate and say almost is I don't like that top. That was a town car thing uh, to put that vinyl top on there or whatever it is, canvas on top of the hard top. It makes it look like a convertible or something, but I'm not a fan of that. So I'm going to pass on that one only because of that top. Oh, I clicked on the Caprice Classic. See what we got out of that. <laughs> That's not what we're looking for. Uh, there is a 2001 town car with only 17,000 miles. Ah, oh, look at that. The buy it now price on that one, you can see they're trying to get their money out of it. 17,200. But terrible camera quality, but super cool car. It looks like an Enterprise plate on it, which is weird. Maybe somebody traded it in an Enterprise. With their car buying program uh, lots of cars that I would be interested in here there's another 05 oh, that's a limousine we don't need a limousine I'm not sure what I would do with that Grand Marquis that's a little older than my taste but still kind of cool not quite what I want but it's 2016 Chevy Capri can't talk Caprice patrol vehicle so this is apparently an old police car that's kind of neat. Eh. Okay, that's kind of rough. So I'm kind of a... I, when I say I like these old uh, land yachts, I want the fancy ones. I don't want an old police car. I want the one with as much stuff as you could get on it when it came. Here's an 05 DeVille with 84,000 miles. Now that... That's pretty attractive to me. I like that. I like the shape of the rear end on the DeVille. Uh... Now, of course, this DeVille or DTS, I guess in 2005, maybe it was still called a DeVille, uh, is front-wheel drive. So that's a little bit annoying, but these are nice, nice cars. The last one I had, I actually made a little bit of money on, so I'm not opposed to the Cadillac DTS, even though it's a front-wheel drive. And let's see what else here. There's an 81,000-mile DTS 2010. And it's the nice, pretty pearl white. So I dig that. Let's see. Yeah, that one looks, that one looks doable. Uh, and that's in Carolina, Carolina Auto Auction in Williamston, South Carolina. I don't know. Let's continue on here and see what else we see. Oh, here we go. 05 Crown Vic. 36,000 miles. Look at that beast. Gosh, I, I wish these I wish these auctions all had a little bit better camera. And there's only four pictures. That makes me nervous. But that that's a pretty cool one right there. I don't know. Let's look here. There's a Grand Marquis with 97,000 miles. What else? What else? What else? What do you see, folks? What do you see? If I missed something that you thought was great, tell me in the comments. 2003 Cadillac DeVille. Look at that one. Beautiful. Love the white. Oh man, that is just a classy, classy car right there. 
I don't care what age it is, that is a classy car. They don't make them like that anymore. Beautiful. Boy, more Cadillacs than anything here. And the town cars, I dig the town cars, but when they put that ugly roof on them, I just think that ruins the look of the car completely. Nothing else really catching my eye here. An 89 town car, that's pretty cool. Not something I really want to buy because it would be hard for me to resale, but still cool. Still cool in its own way. There's a 2011 Grand Marquis with 62,000 miles. That's a pretty interesting one. Uh, buy it now. 16,000. <laughs> and that is a dealer with a sense of humor. And you see they have this advertisement up here. Recession prices on. <laughs> That's Kareem Auto Sales. Uh, this is the Richmond, Virginia Auto Auction. $16,000 for a 2011 Grand Marquis. $16,000? Okay. <laughs> Let's see what the MMR is on that, just to, or see what the value is, just to make sure I'm not making fun of this dealership for no reason. Yes, auction value six to eight. Uh, eight to 10 is the value. Now, I understand that one has very low mileage and it looks like it's perfect, but it's not 6,000 more than retail perfect. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. Kareem, who are you trying to fool, bro? Kareem, check yourself, man. Just check yourself. The number one car I am looking for right now, and this will come as no surprise to people who know me well, but I am, I feel like on a Corvette hunt right now. <laughs> uh, I love Corvettes, and... It's not even really one specific model. Now, there's a couple Corvettes in particular that I'm really hot on and I'm looking for right now. Um, but I'm a little bit picky uh, because I've had several Corvettes now. I know exactly what I want. Um, I don't really want any more C4s. The only C4s I will consider are the very last C4s, 95s and 96s. Um, those are the only ones I'm even interested in at this point. Uh, I love Grand Sports, obviously. Those are getting pretty hard to find. I love the red, white, and blue paint scheme on the Grand Sport. The 96s, the last year of the C4, I think it was very refined, uh, especially if you can find a 30th anniversary one with the uh, six-speed manual. It actually had the bigger engine, can't remember right now is it the lt4 i think so or it might be ls4 whatever but anyway <clears throat> corvette people know what i'm talking about 96 uh 30th anniversary with a six speed had a different engine but um c5s i like pretty much all c5s so it comes down to the uh mileage and the color pretty much um i'm getting a little pickier about colors like, I want certain things. Like, I love my Corvette to have red interior. So, if I have to buy a white one to get red interior, that's cool. Uh, convertibles are my favorite. In the C5 generation, actually, Z06s are probably the best hot rod deal on the market today. So, I'm always looking for a C5 Z06. Um, the only bad thing about those is they only have a coupe. They don't even have the removable target top. So that kind of annoys me. I know they did it for stiffness and it was to make the car handle better, but still, I want to be able to take my top off. That's probably the only reason I haven't bought a Z06 to this point. Um, awesome car still. And <clears throat> if I was really not feeling cheap one day and I saw a deal, the special edition C6, I can't even think exactly what year it is. I want to say 2006, um, the one Corvette people, once again, will know what I'm talking about. Everybody else may not, but I'll throw a picture up here. It's white with the silver kind of ghost stripes, and it has the 427. That is kind of my dream car in a convertible. Like, I want that car really, really bad. Got to be the 427, uh, the bigger engine. That, if you've ever heard one, 
you know what I'm talking about. Like that has one of the most, unless you get into higher end luxury uh, exotic cars, the 427 C6 Corvette has one of the most beautiful exhaust notes I've ever heard. I mean, it sounds wonderful when it takes off. So love, love, love those. All right, this is the last search we'll be doing for today. Let's check out the Corvette. Now, in all fairness, folks, I just want you to know ahead of time that I already know this market. <laughs> I look at these Corvettes every few days just to see what's out there and what they're selling for. So I don't want to pretend like I am surprised by what we're looking at. 719 Corvettes available. Uh, I don't want any high mileage Corvettes. So let's just stop it at 100. Don't want anything over that for sure. Um, let's limit it to my auctions. And let's see what we got. Photos. I only want the ones with photos. That still leaves us 229 Corvettes. So that's a lot of Corvettes. Now I currently am not interested in uh, C8s. I can't afford them. I'm not interested in C7s. I am, however, interested in C6s and C5s. So anyway, um, first one that catches my eye, C5 Corvettes are maybe the most economical, great sports car you can buy on the market right now. And here's a great example of one. This is a 2001 convert, is it a convertible? No, I'm sorry, it's a coupe. Um, 61,000 miles, MMR's 13,000. Uh, I don't love the wheels on that one and I kind of hate that color to be quite truthful with you I like silver um, I don't like that Corvette silver from this body style because it's like pewter it's kind of brownish looking I don't know let's see what it's actually worth uh, so the range on this car is 11.7 to 15 according to Kelly Blue Book at the auction so what you can expect to sell it for 15.8 to 18.1 so, I mean, you got a pretty pretty decent little range that you can actually make some money on there. And I like that car. Um, the only other downside I see is it looks like it is... Oh, no, that's a manual. I thought it looked like a automatic, but it must just be shoved up in third because it looks funny sitting there. But, <clears throat> anyway. Move on, see what else we see here. Uh, that is a great deal. 2007 see that is a true silver mm, I love the silver so take away that pewter and I'm I'm down with it this one has a 3d picture I kind of hate these Let's see here 45,000 miles of course you can see that up there the pictures are weird on this one let's let's see what Carbly says this one's worth range of 18 to 23 I want to stay probably 20 and under so one that looks that good in a convertible I'm probably gonna have a hard time getting a hold of but I love that look I love the convertible in the c6 I love the sharp edges like down this ridge how it looks uh, the shape of a fuel door uh, I think they just put a lot of thought into how they designed this car because the C5 was kind of, I don't know, C5 is a little more, everything's rounded. So, oh, and here we go. See, this is the best deal in the car world as far as sports cars, if you ask me right now. Here is a 2002 Z06. Um, like, if you're looking for power on a budget, um, I don't see how you could do better than a C5 Z06 right now. Ooh, what is that? There's like a plastic in there. Is the window broken or something? Uh, but anyway, this being a Z06, I don't know if anyone watching has ever driven one of those. Tell everybody else down in the comments because this thing is a rocket ship. An absolute rocket ship. Not that all the Corvettes aren't fast compared to normal cars, but the Z06 is completely on its own level. 
All right, let's just skim down through here and look at a couple more real quick. We're going to wrap this video up. I want to thank everybody very much for watching today's video. This is a little bit different style of something for me to do from my office instead of always being out with cars. Look at that thing. What is that? 1992. <laughs> is that just some aftermarket hood? Oh, I'm not sure if I love it or hate it, but it sure is different. Got louvers on the back window. Oh. I don't know about that. Anyway, folks, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. We're going to talk more about vehicles that are on the market right now and vehicles that I'm looking for. And we might even do some videos talking about the car business and how to get into the car business and how it's going for me right now. All right. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hoopty in the Hills. Tune back in. See you soon.